happy Monday so I hope you guys had a great weekend um, this weekend um, I had a pleasant one I watched um, my hard-working husband and two younger sons put together our front garden area and um, it was for my Mother's Day gifts so it took two weekends uh, to finish and um, so it was neat to have um, the family working together and now it looks so much prettier and um, I'm thrilled, I'm pleased, I'm delighted, I'm blessed and I thank God for my husband and my sons and I thank God that um, he moved upon his heart, my husband's heart to do this for me. I did not ask for it so it was all him. He didn't ask for my opinion, my thoughts. Um, I just told him what colors I liked. I said pink, purple, and um, yellow. So he did, um, he got me some yellow flowers. I don't know what they're called. Um, some pink um, uh, impatience, I think that's what they're called. Some white and yellow and some purple. So, and of course uh, our gardenia, they're beginning to bloom and so, I'm pretty happy. Anyways, um, I'm on my way to our um, Monday business morning um, meetings and um, just what the Lord has been laying on my heart heavily for these last few days since uh, May 16th when he gave me um, that dream. Let me give myself some air. Whew. I turned the heater on a little bit because I was just out there watering my garden and um, the hose uh, was like, you know, it had um, it has some type of leak and it's had water running all over and it got me half soaked so anyways and since that May 16th dream where uh, the ancient of days Jesus in his white hair white beard eyes like fire from his throne in heaven declaring Isaiah 118 and uh, as he was declaring his word in Isaiah 118, lightnings and thunders were flashing and rumbling and shaking all around him. I saw lightnings and I saw the, thun uh, the ancient of days, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, amen, um, speak. And uh, real quick, let me see if I have Isaiah 118. But the message was on reconciliation. Isaiah 118 says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, though your sins be as scarlet, my sins be as scarlet. They shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So in um, the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 14 and Daniel chapter 7 speaks about uh, the ancient of days, his hair, his beard, his eyes, everything is white like the sun, bright like stars and when he speaks, thunders and lightning comes out. <laughs> so that's how powerful our God is. I cannot describe to you how powerful every time he reveals another aspect, another essence another character nature uh, of who he is power has always um, accompanied that because he is our all-powerful God he wraps himself in light he is light amen so let me get to uh, the message the message is on reconciliation and that is what my today's devotional is on reconciliation which we must have with God and with others if we hope to go to his holy heaven. Amen. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 through 21 says, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, if you've been born again, redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and you have his Holy Spirit in you, been born again by his Spirit, you and I have been given the ministry of reconciliation, amen? Reconciling us to God, our Father, and reconciling others to God, 
by sharing his message of grace, mercy, forgiveness on Calvary. Now it's up to them to receive it or not, and it's up to them to want reconciliation with God, their maker or not. But it's our obligations, responsibility, our divine um, order, divine um, commandment of God, the Great Commission, and he has entrusted us with the ministry of reconciliation, calling others to come get, uh, come reconcile with God, get right with God before Jesus Christ returns. And that is uh, one of the major callings in my life. The Lord Jesus appeared um, in a vivid prophetic dream in the spring, early summer of 2004, right? after I got back from my first mission trip to Cambodia. And he said, tell my people I'm coming. And you heard my testimony, I argued with him. I said, no, Lord, you can't come now. We're not ready yet. I just got done, I just got started serving you. My family aren't safe. We're not ready yet, please don't come now. And then he repeated himself again, tell my people I'm coming. So that is his commission upon my life. Um, to tell the people of God that he is coming and to call all of mankind under the sound of my voice to be reconciled to God because Jesus Christ is coming back. What day, what hour, what year, I don't know, but it's sooner now than ever. Amen. All right. I'm not sure if I finished. No, I didn't finish. Okay. Verse 19. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Thank you, Lord. And hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. We have the word of reconciliation. Amen. And that is repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Promise unto us and to all who are afar off and to our children's children. Amen. So we must repent, make up our mind, turn away from our evil, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And he will give us the gift of his Holy Spirit who empowers us to live for him, to fulfill the great commissions that he's given us to run our race, to finish our race. Amen and to be his witnesses unto the uttermost parts of the earth. That is the whole purpose of the gift of the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit, amen. All right, let me continue. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Jesus became sin for us. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. How do we see we receive the grace of God in vain? For well, one, for not living um, and following Jesus Christ and obeying him in the Great Commission, that's for one, and uh, not sharing the ministry of reconciliation, the, the testimony of grace and forgiveness and mercy, salvation, the kingdom of God that he has revealed to us, that he has given us, amen, for not sharing it with others and just keeping it to ourselves, being quiet, being silent, secret Christians, which is no such thing. If the Holy Ghost is in you, you are going to be on fire, on fire to tell the world about his love, his goodness, his mercy, his grace, his redemption power in your life. I once was bound by all sorts of sins and addictions, but Jesus Christ in his presence, in his glory came to me and broke off every demonic chains off of my life. Does that mean I never sinned again? No, but it means that sin no longer has dominion over my life and over any born again child of God who chooses to cooperate with the spirit of God. Amen. And that's a daily task. We have to choose to cooperate with the spirit of God daily situation by situation moment by moment hours by hours amen all right so let me um close my beautiful pink bible up and let me go to the devotional negative actions and words cause division 
As a result, peace is destroyed, cooperation disappears, and relationships are broken. Reconciliation is what we need to restore our relationship to God and others. I believe most of the sins that I've committed and seen uh, committed to towards me and others begins with negative emotions, demonic negative emotions and um, thoughts that does not line up with the Word of God. And when we don't take our thoughts captive um, to submission um, to Jesus Christ and His Word, then our thoughts give birth to evil desires, then evil actions, and then relationships are broken with God and with others. Amen? Reconciliation is what we need to restore our relationship to God and others, to experience harmony, peace, collaboration, and partnership to fulfill God's purposes. Repentance, forgiveness, and understanding help relationships to be reconciled. This is so important. We must repent of our own sins and forgive others and forgive ourselves sometimes. And understanding is very necessary and powerful. It helps relationships to be reconciled. Acknowledging our own wrongs and asking for forgiveness is the first step toward reconciliation. Extending forgiveness to others who have wronged us is essential to keep relationships healthy and whole. For us, with God, um, as well as with those who wrong us. Amen? Unforgiveness is a poison that we drink only hoping that the other person will get sick and die. <laughs> I added that part. It doesn't say that. If we don't forgive, we are the ones who will get sick. Yep, our soul will get sick. Our emotions and then eventually our bodies and our spirit will be defiled. Unforgiveness opens the door to many illnesses. That is so true. And diseases. But in and through Christ, we can be reconciled in all of our relationships, bringing health and wholeness into our lives. God has called you to be a minister of reconciliation, to reconcile people to God and to each other. Amen. Hallelujah. What does that practically look like for you? Today, give to God the injustices and hurts you've been holding on to. Repent, forgive, and seek to see the people and situation, situations of your life through God's eyes. They need forgiveness just as we need forgiveness. Amen? And if we do not forgive others, our Heavenly Father will not forgive us of our sins against Him and others either. So we need the forgiveness of God. So we must forgive others. Promises. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know Him now. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for revelation. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. They're talking about a person that's been born again by the Spirit of God, those who has repented and received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Not just a mere confession, because the devil also believes and trembles, but they're not born again and they're not going to heaven, amen? And they can't obey God. Um, so it's true repentance and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then that person has become a new person in Christ. The old life is gone and a new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. Amen. And that's why Father God um, and the Lord Jesus Christ himself and the Holy Spirit is pleading with us, with mankind, through his servants, for the world to be reconciled to him. That's why he gave me that dream, May 16, 2019, where the Ancient of Days is pleading for mankind to come to him so that he could wash our sins white as snow. Amen? All right. 
God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. Amen. We must return to the Lord our God. He's our only hope, our only Savior. And he's the only one that can take us to heaven with him. Amen. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Amen. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 through 21. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. Amen. I thank God for all the forgivenesses that the Lord has given me. I was a very vile, bitter, perverted, um, bound to all sorts of demonic, uh, evil addictions and sins before Christ broke off the chains um, off of my life. If one has a complaint against another, that forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Colossians chapter 3 verse 12 through 13. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Romans chapter 5 verse 11. And whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against another, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Mark eleven twenty five. So whatever it is that we're praying for, um, if we're wanting the mighty hands of God to move mountains, move mountains in our lives and to come through for us to show his glory and power and majesty and favor and provision, protection, anything at all. If we have anything at all in our heart against anybody, we must release it. We must release it at the altar. Give it to Jesus. He wants all of our pains, every bit of hurt, brokenness, betrayal, uh, unforgiveness, anger, rage, vengeance. He wants it all. And um, he will take it and he will turn all things, make all things for good to those who love him and those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. We must trust our God, release others so that we can be free to pursue the purpose and destiny of Christ that he has for us. Amen. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive 